When we look at our planet Earth today, it is the source of a seemingly infinite diversity of habitat. These in turn host breathtaking species richness. For all this, the ocean plays a crucial role. Everyone knows the vibrant tropical coral reefs, which are hotspots of biological diversity on planet Earth. But has it always been like this? To have a closer look at this, let's go back through time. This is how the Earth looked more than 300 million years ago, with Pangaea as a supercontinent. All life on Earth has been close to extinction, and this happened not just once. There have been at least five major mass extinctions in the last 500 million years, often mentioned as the Big Five. The last, but for sure not the final big extinction event, happened 66 million years ago, the so-called cretaceous paleogene extinction, with 75% of all species lost, from which the dinosaurs are the most well-known. These events were due to dramatic changes of environmental conditions, especially in the oceans. Many various causes have been discussed, including global glaciation, volcanic activities, as well as asteroid impacts. But this was nothing compared to what happened 252 million years ago during the Permian-Triassic mass extinction, also known as the Big Dying. This event was daggered by a subsequent volcanic eruption in the area known as the Siberian Trap. The volcanic activity was releasing lots of aerosols and SO2, sulfur dioxide, which at first resulted in a global temperature decrease, followed by rapid global warming due to the release of greenhouse gases such as CH4, methane, and CO2, carbon dioxide. This increase in temperature ultimately caused the oxygen levels in the oceans to become dangerously low. The increased heat also warmed the ocean's surface waters, leading to the collapse of temperature gradients in the oceans. This hindered the layers of water from mixing and thus contributed to the depletion in oxygen. The additional nutrients and CO2, both in the oceans and in the atmosphere, encouraged the growth of plants, which increased the amount of organic matter that sank into the ocean's depths. The decay process of this organic matter consumed huge amounts of oxygen. All this led to a catastrophic change of the living conditions for all life on Earth. At the end, more than 95% of all species were wiped out. But how do we know what the conditions in the past used to be like? When historians want to get insights into what happened 100 or 200 years ago, they visit libraries or archives in which written evidences can be found. There are also such archives in geology, similar to what we know from books stored in libraries. However, in geology, they look somewhat different. Here we read in marine sediments and fossils, for example in calcite shells of fossil brachiopods. Brachiopods are marine animals that look quite similar to bivalves, but are not systematically related to them. Simply put, Brachiopods have as much in common with bivalves as a starfish has with a dog. So what makes brachiopods suitable for geological observations? First of all, brachiopods inhabited the oceans since more than 350 million years ago. Additionally, brachiopod fossils are comparatively well preserved, and therefore information which indicates chemical conditions of the seawater that was present at the brachiopod lifetime, is reliably stored. Of course, brachiopod shells do not provide information in written form, but rather encoded as chemical and mineralogical compositions. Returning to the comparison with libraries, we can say that fossil brachiopods can be considered as millions of years old books with chemical signals as characters. So far, so good. But one might ask the legitimate question, 
How can we decrypt the chemical characters? The shell is composed of different elements, such as calcium, magnesium, carbon, strontium, and boron. Moreover, the archived elements have specific isotopes of the elements, such as magnesium-26 or carbon-14. Important details are also available by the investigation of element and isotope ratios, such as magnesium to calcium element ratio and calcium-44 to 40 isotopes. When we are able to reliably detect the ratios of elements and isotopes stored in fossil shells, we will be able to decode the information which is stored in the shells dating back millions of years. Thus, this is our tool, for example, to determine the age of the shells, as well as to reconstruct the chemical composition of the past ocean and prevailing environmental conditions, such as temperature and acidity of the ocean water. By using model calculations, we can then compare environmental changes in the past to present and finally predict scenarios for the future ocean.